Hey, I'm Rob Witcher, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to evaluation criteria in Domain 3 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the second of nine videos for Domain 3. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. As part of building a secure environment, every organization is going to need to acquire various products from vendors, firewalls, routers, intrusion detection systems, and so on. As security professionals advising the acquisition process for such products, we must ensure the products are well designed and provide the security functionality the organization requires. But here we encounter a challenge. If we ask, say, a firewall vendor, hey, how secure is your product? What are they going to say? They're going to say something like, My firewall's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Grown men literally weep in awe of my product's shining brilliance. Should we as security professionals believe this marketing malarkey? Absolutely not. So how then do we compare different vendors' products and trust the claims about a product's functionality? Evaluation criteria. Evaluation criteria are independent objective evaluation systems for products. Here's how this works. A vendor will create a product, then the vendor will pay an independent testing lab to evaluate their product using one of the evaluation criteria we're going to talk about in a moment. The independent lab will test the product, give it a rating, and produce a report that the vendor can then hand out to their customers. And customers are going to trust the rating in the report because it was provided by an independent testing lab, not the vendor. There are two major steps involved with evaluation criteria. The first is certification. And the second is accreditation. We'll start with certification, which is the comprehensive technical analysis of a solution or product to ensure it meets our needs. In other words, the certification step is where the independent testing lab evaluates a product and gives it a rating. Let's look at the different evaluation criteria systems that have been developed, starting with one of the oldest, TCSEC the Trusted Computing System Evaluation Criteria, otherwise known as the Orange Book, because the cover of the TCSEC was pink. It's orange. It was orange. TCSEC was only designed to evaluate the confidentiality that a system provides, and TCSEC was only designed to evaluate a product that is not connected to a network, single standalone boxes only. TCSEC defines seven functional levels that a product could be rated based on the evaluation, starting with the lowest possible rating, which is D1, which means the product failed or wasn't tested. Not a reassuring rating for a product. Next up is C1, which means the product provides weak protection mechanisms. Next is C2, and each of these levels build on the previous. So C2 adds that products provide strict login procedures. C2 is the most common rating for products. B1 is where labeling becomes a requirement for products. Remember that, B1, labeling. B2 means products provide security labels and verification of no covert channels. B3 means products provide security labels, verification of no covert channels, and must stay secure during startup. And finally, the highest possible functional rating that a product can achieve is A1, verified design. So secure, it is virtually unusable. ITSEC, the Information Technology Security Evaluation Criteria, is a big improvement on the older TCSEC. ITSEC can be used to evaluate not just the confidentiality that a product provides, but also the integrity. ITSEC can be used to evaluate devices that are connected to a network. And ITSEC uses exactly the same functional levels as TCSEC that we just went through. D1, C1, C2, B1, etc. The final major improvement that ITSEC provides is that it can be used to evaluate not just the functionality that a product provides, but also the assurance. Remember, functional means what the system should do, and assurance means how do we verify, how do we test that it is working correctly. So ITSEC can be used to evaluate the level of assurance that a product can provide. These are the levels referred to as the evaluation levels or E levels, and there are seven of them, E0 up to E6. I don't think you need to memorize the specifics of these levels. Okay, now, the latest and greatest evaluation criteria, 
the common criteria for information technology security evaluation. Everyone just calls it common criteria. Common criteria has been adopted as an international standard, specifically ISO 15408. The common criteria evaluation process begins with defining a protection profile, which identifies the security requirements for a class of security devices, for firewalls, for smart cards, etc. So the protection profile is a class of devices. The target of evaluation, the TOE, defines the specific product or system that will be evaluated. This is the specific product provided by the vendor to be evaluated. For example, a Cisco ASA 51005-X firewall could be the TOE, the target of evaluation. The security targets is a document prepared by the product vendor which defines the specific functional and assurance security properties and capabilities that the vendor claims are built into the target of evaluation. The independent testing lab will then test the functional and assurance aspects of the target of evaluation. And the end result will be an EAL rating, an evaluation assurance level rating. Before we get into the EAL ratings, here's a visual summary of the common criteria process. Now, on to the EAL ratings, of which there are seven. Starting from the lowest rating, EAL1, which means only the functionality of the product was tested. EAL2 means only the structure of a product was tested. EAL3 methodically tested and checked. You'll notice that these build on each other. EAL4 methodically designed, tested, and reviewed. EAL5 semi-formally designed and tested. EAL6 semi-formally verified, designed, and tested. And the best possible rating, EAL7 formally verified and designed. I would highly recommend that you memorize these EAL levels and the order of them. And now last, but certainly not least, the final major piece of evaluation criteria, accreditation. As I discussed at the beginning, the whole point of evaluation criteria is to help an organization evaluate and compare different products and choose the best solution for their organization. The final step in selecting a product is management's approval and sign-off. This is accreditation, official management sign-off for a set period of time to purchase and deploy a product in the organization. And that is an overview of evaluation criteria within Domain 3, covering the most critical concepts to know for the exam. If you found this video helpful, you can hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to be notified when we release additional videos in this mind map series, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications. I'll provide links to the other mind map videos in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies.